hi this is shari and now we discuss about motor neuron disease a uh, motor neuron disease it is a progressive disorder of motor neuron and it is of unknown cause actually there is a degeneration of motor neurons of it may be of spinal cord and of uh, cranial nerves or of pyramidal neurons in the motor cortex so motor neurons of uh, all over the nerve systems are deranged or degeneration degenerated means that is called motor neuron disease and the basic classification of motor neuron motor nerves are first is somatic and autonomic and autonomic means that is sympathetic and parasympathetic and somatic that is divided into upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron upper motor neuron is also of two types pyramidal and extra pyramidal motor neuron means basically these are neurons or nerves that transmit impulses from the brain to the periphery somat now autonomic nerve system means that is of two types sympathetic and parasympathetic these control involuntary uh, activities of the body these are basically uh, nerves that arises from the spinal cord and that synapses with some of the some of the ganglion of sympathetic trunk and that innervate to the different organs of the body and causes involuntary uh, functions like defecation urination and a uh, secretion of um salivary gland secretion of uh, enzymes so these control involuntary uh, activity of internal organs that is about motor uh, autonomic nerves and these autonomic nerves uh, especially sympathetic and parasympathetic functions are very rarely deranged in motor neuron disease mostly motor neuron disease the deranged mainly occurs uh, derangement mainly occurs in somatic neurons that is upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron upper motor neuron are those that arise from the brain or cerebrum and that ends in the anterior horn of the spinal cord so that is of two types sim pyramidal tract and extra pyramidal tract in which this pyramidal tract that uh, controls voluntary muscular activity and extra pyramidal tract then controls involuntary muscular activity or maintenance of posture and tone of the muscles that is controlled by extra pyramidal tract and that is about upper motor neuron lower motor neuron means these are nerve fibers that starts from the spinal cord or uh, from the ganglia or uh, from the nucleus and then ends in the neuromuscular junction so these are called lower motor neuron and uh, about pyramidal tract is very important regarding motor neuron disease pyramidal tract means those nerves that arise from the brain or cerebrum and that arise and that comes as a radiation and comes to the inter near the internal capsule and uh, while uh, reaching near the internal capsule these pyramidal tract or these nerve fibers that become compact together so very slight lesion near the internal capsule causes a widespread neurological deficit so that is importance and then it descends downwards that pass through the midbrain pons and medulla when it reaches the medulla majority of these fibers cross to the opposite side so that is called great motor decussion any lesion before this decussion cause hemiplegia or paralysis in the opposite side of the body and any lesion before after the decussion cause after the decussion cause hemiplegia on the same side of the body that is importance and that ends in the anterior and further descends and ends in the anterior horn of the spinal cord this is the pyramidal tract and regarding the derangement in upper and lower motor neuron its main signs are first is a upper motor neuron it that mainly causes a uh, weakness and uh, the extensor plantar responses and the tone of the muscles are increased all reflex are exaggerated and there is no muscle wasting muscle wasting are predominantly seen in lower motor neuron lesions 
in upper motor neuron lesions there is no wasting there is exaggerated reflexes and there is uh, weakness and the tone of the muscles are increased in long motor neuron there is wasting and fasciculations so this is regarding the basic anatomy and physiology of motor neurons then coming back to the prevalence and incidence of motor neuron disease 5% of these diseases are familial or that is an autosomal dominant inheritance and many of these runs in family it is basically a genetic defect and the defect lies in the chromosome 21 and enzyme involved being that is peroxidase dimutase this enzyme is involved and this is a, this is a, a familial disorder 5% of these are inherited and 95% of these majority of these are cause uh, are thought to be caused from external cause uh, like viral infection trauma toxins electric shock and um, but there is no evidence to support these etiology and the prevalence of the disease is about 5 by 1 lakh about the clinical features of motor neuron disease the patient present with combination of lower and upper motor neuron signs without sensory involvement so motor neuron disease is a condition which can be diagnosed prior to any mri scan so this can be diagnosed by pure clinical features or symptomatology plus examination of central nerve system so while doing the examination of central nerve system we get the examination of higher functions are normal examination of sensory nerves are normal but the examination of motor neurons are abnormal if there is signs of motor neuron lesion then this is purely we can diagnose it as mostly of motor neuron disease and um, the prevalence there is presence of bris reflex associated with this there is bris reflex and there is wasting and fasciculating of limbs um, that is uh, muscles is typical of motor neuron disease and the onset uh, usually after the age of 50 years uh, very uncommon before the age of 30 years and it affects males more commonly than female and the symptoms are the limp uh, limp muscle weakness is there and cramps and occasionally fasciculation so a uh, weakness means paralysis and fasciculation and there is um, disturbance of speech and soloing that is a disturbance of speech is called dysarthria and disturbance of soloing means dysphagia so disturbance of speech means uh, while uh, the patient is speech, uh, speaking there is logic uh, in his speech means the higher function so the motor cortex are normal but dysarthria means difficulty of speech is due to the innervation of the nerve to the tongue so this is due to the problem with hypoglossal nerve uh, we know that motor neuron disease can affect uh, motor neurons of cranial nerves uh, cranial nerves can be both mm, both can be sensory nerves can be of motor nerves can be of both sensory and motor so there are cranial nerves which are only motor neurons so especially these are hypoglossal nerve and uh, these uh, purely motor cranial nerves uh, mm, derangement uh, symptoms are very prominent prominent seen in motor neuron disease hypoglossal nerve is a motor purely uh, motor uh, cranial motor neuron and it innervates the tongue and that is why uh, this dysarthria and dysphagia occurs and the signs clinical signs of the motor neuron disease are first it is there is wasting and fasciculation of the muscles actually wasting and fasciculations of the muscles means that is a sign of lower, lower motor neuron and weakness of the muscles of tongue that means paralysis of the limbs tongue face and palate and the pyramidal tract involvement cause spasticity and exaggerated tendon reflex and extensor plantar response so pyramidal tract means there is upper motor neuron and the signs of upper motor neuron uh, signs are also seen 
but there is no abnormality in the ocular muscles and spindle muscles and there is no problem with sensory nerves and the intellectual functions are absolutely normal so these are the signs of clinical examination signs of there is um, motor neuron disease and the cause of the disease is mainly begins focally in one part and spread um, gradually uh, become and become widespread and uh, this motor neuron disease are authentically divided into three uh, there is progressive muscular atrophy amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and progressive bulbar palsy and in some textbooks there is a uh, primary lateral sclerosis is c uh, is given but authentically these three classification are seen amyotrophic lateral sclerosis means there is combination of lower motor neuron lesion and upper motor neuron lesion so combination of distal and proximal muscle wasting weakness and fasciculation is seen and uh, uh, weakness fasciculation wasting means these are signs of lower motor neuron at the same time spasticity exaggerated reflex extensor plantar symptoms means signs means uh, these are signs of upper motor neuron lesion so this upper motor and lower motor lesions that mixed up in my amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and there is also bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy follow eventually so bulbar palsy means uh, we have already said about hypoglossal nerve that is a purely motor cranial nerve and this hypoglossal nerve has upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron and upper motor neuron lesion of hypoglossal nerve is called pseudo bulbar palsy and lower motor neuron uh, lesion of the hypoglossal nerve is called bulbar palsy and uh, and and and, and so there, there is there is a difference in this arthria of these two conditions bulbar and pseudo bulbar palsy bulbar palsy means the speech of the patient is of nasal quality and because of the paralysis of the palate it has a nasal quality or it may be a, it seems like paralysis of palate and pseudo bulbar palsy means the dysarthria of the um, speech or the speech of the patient will be somewhat like spastic speech or uh, it is called hot potato speech and the speech is very uh, very very high pitched voice and the patient uh, needs a lot of energy to say a word or there is a lot of resistance between speech that is called hot potato speech spastic speech that is seen in pseudo bulbar palsy so and also the perimeral tract features may also predominate features may predominate in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis next is progressive muscular atrophy atrophy means itself means there is lower motor neuron lesion it is a uh, predominantly spinal motor neuron are affected and there are signs of uh, lower motor neuron lesion like wasting fasciculation and tension reflexes are absent so that is am um, i uh, that is progressive muscular atrophy and prog progressive bulbar palsy that is mainly a uh, lower motor neuron bulbar means lower motor neuron lesion that involves early involvement of tongue palate and pharyngeal muscles are seen there is dysarthria and dysphagia and there is phasing and uh, wasting and fasciculation of the tongue uh, fasciculation and wasting means there is a lower motor neuron and maybe perimeral signs as well as are seen as well so there is a uh, progressive bulbar palsy means that is basically affecting the hypoglossal nerve which is a purely motor cranial nerve so there is progressive bulbar palsy and there is i uh, also another classification in some textbooks like um, primary uh, lateral sclerosis that condition mainly upper motor neuron lesions are seen predominantly so the different differential diagnosis of this uh, motor neuron diseases that is uh, diabetic uh, we have to eliminate certain conditions which are curable actually this motor neuron disease is a progressive condition there is no excellent or uh, 
accurate uh, treatment or medication for this condition as far as now and we have to eliminate other conditions um, uh, curable condition uh, they are um, diabetic amylotrophy and uh, spinal disorders and other differential diagnoses are multifocal motor neuropathy and uh, cerebrovascular disease in some uh, cerebrovascular disease at some um, after long time after um, prolonged progression that may lead to symptoms mimicking motor neuron disease uh, mixing them of upper and lower motor neuron lesions and uh, another uh, differential diagnosis is dementia we can differentiate dementia from motor neuron disease by uh, in that uh, dementia has involvement of uh, intellectual or higher functions are also deranged but at the same time motor neuron disease intellectual functions are intact or normal and uh, multiple sclerosis in this condition and uh, also there is mixed pattern like uh, um, uh, symptoms of uh, both upper and lower motor neuron lesion and another differential diagnosis is uh, myasthenia gravis that is a dera that is a derangement that occurs in the neuromuscular junction uh, in this uh, the characteristic symptom of this is uh, this is actually an autoimmune disease in which there is auto antibodies are directed against the acetylcholine receptors and uh, these de receptors are uh, destroyed and uh, the, the very uh, differentiating feature or the symptom that can differentiate from motor neuron disease is that in uh, myasthenia gravis uh, the condition or a paralysis of weakness that is aggravated by work uh, and ameliorated by rest because during uh, during work or exertion the small amount of the receptors that are that are available are uh, also maximally used so the symptoms become aggravated by rest some of the receptors will be freely uh, free so the symptoms become ameliorated so aggravation by work and ameliorated by rest is a characteristic symptom of myasthenia gravis and another uh, the other differential diagnosis are kusfield jacob syndrome Crossfield Jacob syndrome it actually it is a prion body disease actually uh, it is a, it is um, prion disease it is also involved the um, higher functions and also ataxic symptoms are seen so it can be differentiated from motor neuron disease by uh, by by analyzing the higher mental functions actually this Crossfield Jacob disease uh, that is mainly seen in cannibalistic uh, people uh, that consumes uh, human human um, human meat and it's seen in patients also uh, consuming um, meat or non-vegetarian food adulterated by human meat and other differential diagnoses are metabolic conditions like thyrotoxicosis lead poisoning hyperparathyroidism and this is about regarding differential diagnosis of motor neuron disease and about diagnosis diagnosis means there is a electromyelography that helps to confirm presence of fasciculation and denervation and particularly helpful when pyramidal features predominate and sensory nerve conduction or motor conduction studies are normal uh, sensory nerve condition uh, conduction and a motor uh, conduction studies are normal but there is some reduction in the amplitude of the action potential due to loss of action so in motor conduction studies if there is a reduction in the amplitude of the action potential then we can diagnose and um, spinal imaging and brain scanning can be done to exclude uh, where any other cerebral disease or focal spinal diseases and cerebrospinal fluid examination is usually uh, normal but there is a slight elevation in protein concentration may be seen and management as far as now uh, there is no um, excellent therapeutic method to completely cure this condition uh, we can at least um, give accessory or general management supportive treatment to uh, to uh, prolong the, the um, patient's lifespan and uh, there is psychological physical support should be given and help occupational and speech therapies are given and physiotherapy is given are essential to maintain the patient's quality of life 
and mechanical aids uh, walking aids wheelchairs communication devices uh, should be uh, given to compensate hang handicap and uh, feeding at the last stage the uh, percutaneous gastrotomy should be maybe uh, necessary in case of bulbar palsy uh, or in the case of dysphagia and in sometimes non invasive ventilatory support may help um, to de- to help the distress from weak respiratory muscles and uh, regarding the prognosis of this condition uh, motor neuron disease is an absolutely progressive condition and the mean time from the diagnosis to death is 1 year and the most pers- patients die within 3 to 5 years of the onset of symptoms and younger patients are and those with early bulbar symptoms tend to show a more rapid course so uh, the death is usually from respiratory infection or uh, respiratory failure or a complications of immobility regarding homeopathic management uh, first we have to see uh, if this um, if this manageable um or a, a, a we have to consider the most uh, first consider the analysis of symptoms regarding analysis of symptoms first we have to consider the most prominent symptom or the first symptom the patient present or the primary symptoms first symptom the patient present or the most prominent symptom we have to uh, find and we have to consider acute totality and give an acute remedy or remedy having special special affinity for this condition or towards this um, towards the nerve system and when the symptoms are temporarily relieved then we have to go to anti syphilitic remedy and then gradually uh, we have to go to ultimately we have to go to constitution remedy so this is the plan of the treatment so the remedies that cover uh, paraplegia and trampling of paralyzed parts are nux vomica plumpum causticum cochlus argentum nitricum arsal baptisia botulinum colophyllum and uh, progressive paralysis symptoms of progressive paralysis spastic uh, paralysis emaciation of paralyzed limb Pa- um, uh, paralysis of the organs, uh, trampling of paralyzed parts, all these symptoms are covered by plumpum, causticum, nux vomica, gelsemium, CKL core, anacardium, and uh, uh, corta- co- uh, crotalis cascavella, curare, glonoin, carifos. And progressive paralysis or uh, spastic paralysis that is also covered by plumpum, causticum, curare, nux vomica and paralyzed limb emaciation of paralyzed limb emaciation affected parts that is mainly a low motor neuron lesion that is covered by plumpum sigil core sepia nux vomica graphitis ledum palsella or salbica bovage and uh, mental symptoms like uh, mind speech inarticulate or uh, paralysis of organ wanting that is covered by causticum anacardium gelsemium Aesculus glabra, uh, Botulinum bovista, and uh, Cardmium sulf, Cannabis sativa, Crotalis cascavella, and Glonoin muriatic acid. And uh, paraplegia, trampling of paralyzed parts, the emaciation of paralyzed limb, emaciation of the affected parts, speech inarticulate, all these symptoms, and paralysis of organ, uh, speech wanting from. Or uh, this uh, speech, wanting, paralyzed organ from all these symptoms are covered by causticum, plumbum, met, nux, vomica, sigil, cor, gelsemium, anacardium, arsenicum, sepia, and uh, uh, cupra, met. And the m- very acute uh, remedies given for this condition are first is jingo biloba. This jingo biloba is an excellent remedy for regeneration of nerves. Regeneration of nerves means. Um, that is um, that is given in tincture form and this is an excellent medicine that is given in tincture form and this is this particular plant is seen in regions of uh, Nepal and Japan and in regions of Buddhist and actually this particular plant uh, it's the first plant um, that erupted after Nagasaki Hiroshima bomb blast so that is a uh, most indestructible, indestructive, cannot be destruct, uh, destructed even after Nagasaki Hiroshima war. 
so that much that much power it has and this is a most second most primitive plan in the world so this is a very great remedy it is given in the tincture form and latiris uh, that is actually so it is a poisonous plant uh, it is uh, it is very good excellent remedy for lateral sclerosis it's given in la in borix uh, materia medica and uh, if the reflexes are uh, increased and paralysis of limb uh, covering all this condition and latiris sativis actually this is a poisonous um, drug uh, poisonous plant and this particular plant um, wheat uh, actually this uh, particular plant grain is uh, used as adulterant in sambar paripa and um, and this particular um, plant cause ataxic symptoms la and ha um, and cause neurolatiasm and so this um, this plant's potency form can cure um, similar ataxic condition if it is dynamized in or in, in dilute form then can cure similar disease conditions and higher cyamus uh, means that is higher cyamus there goes uh, trem tremulous weakness and in some uh, motor neuron diseases uh, especially uh, having predominant features of pyramidal tract and upper motor neuron lesions in some conditions like pseudo bulbar palsy there is also mental symptoms very rarely mental symptoms are seen if that is associated with um, much of the mental symptoms uh, then we can think of hyoscyamus uh, next to the remedy is caliphose caliphose is also given as a biochemic and as want of nerve power and paralytic lame lameness of back and extremities uh, caliphose is also excellent remedy for nerves and next remedy is phosphorus that has a burning sensation and uh, ascending uh, sensory and motor paralysis and there is weakness and trampling and have particular burning pain um, and in spots and uh, it is an excellent anti-syphilitic remedy so th this is also a, a great remedy for uh, motor neuron disease and plumper met also uh, given uh, that is paralysis of single muscle and also causticum is also an excellent remedy for paralysis of single organ or single part so that is the end of uh, my discussion uh, thanks for watching and have a nice day